Hello my friends, William Poloniak here again at Whole Health Foundation on this hot and humid day in sunny Southern California. Today I decided to go out into my garden and do a little weeding and much to my surprise hidden under the vines I found a bunch of cucumbers and some zucchinis. So I'm going to make cucumber carrot juice today and I'll add a couple of those small zucchinis. I've had zucchinis grow to over three feet long, believe it or not, when they've hidden under a plant. But today it's going to be cucumber, carrots, and a couple of small zucchinis. Let's go make some juice. While I was weeding my garden, I decided to add some dandelion greens to this juice. And I'm going to add one medium-sized beet, one whole bulb of garlic, and some avocado pits. Don't throw your avocado pits away. They make an excellent addition to your juices. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to juice my dandelion greens. And then we'll start with some dandelion greens. down to the last of my greens and before I do the rest of my cucumbers and then the carrots I'm going to clean the grid. Whenever you do greens, clean the grid often because greens are very, very fibrous. Now let's do the rest of the cucumbers. Plug the thermometer back in. Remember when you do cucumbers they're very, very moist so keep this covered because you will get a blowback. Assemble the juicer. The cutter is never left on the machine. Always put it on top with the hole facing down so there's good drainage and the clean grid and grid holder are back in the machine. And next I'm going to mix the pulp. Now I'm noticing a lot of puddling and very liquid pulp so I'm going to do a variation of my six cloth method and put the spent pulp back in to absorb all this liquid in the bowl and put fresh pulp in here. And later on I'll show you how we do the original less work six cloth method where we don't put the pulp back in, but we put new pulp on top of the old pulp. So for now, because it's very, very liquid, I'll advance that a little bit more. Take this spent pulp, put it back in here to absorb all that liquid, and start with new pulp. for the second half of this juice because my original pulp has absorbed all the liquid. I'm not going to throw this away or put it into the bowl. What we're going to do is put new pulp on top of the old pulp and continue with my original less work six cloth method. And pour it into a tight package. The tighter the better. And when you're down to your last cloth, advance it all the way. Dry in the bowl so it doesn't overfill. And we're almost full here, so we're going to keep our eye on that bowl. We don't want that to overflow. Almost full, so I'm not going to fill it all the way. I'm going to stop this. 
put this back, but not a little. Put it back a lot so it's very obvious. You don't want to accidentally forget and damage your tray. So all the way back, and then we'll fill our bowls with this juice. I'm down to my last cloth full of pulp. So while this is pressing, I'm going to repackage the spent pulp into a thick, narrow bowl, and then repress it using a measuring beaker to find out if we can get any more juice out of this batch. And watch my folding technique here. I'm folding this under like so. I want to minimize slippage. I'm going to do that in both directions. Flatten that, set it aside. That's a little bit more. Now I've repackaged all the spent pulp into narrow, thick packages, and I'm going to use a measuring beaker to see how much more juice we can get out of this pulp that's already been pressed. And I did notice that this particular batch of pulp with cucumbers was very, very dry, so I'm not sure how much more we'll get. All the way back, back it off a little. We do not want that to go up too fast, so once we get juice flowing, we'll advance a little bit more. center, that's very important, all the way back, back up a tiny bit. Six ounces, that's all the way. This must have been more pulp than that. And our last set of repackaged pulp. Front to back, all the way back, back it off a little bit. Well, so far, nine ounces, but we're going to overflow, so I'm going to pour this nine ounces into my container and continue. Let's see how much more juice we get. Nine ounces from that my first press. Another three ounces. Center, left to right, front to back, and let's press it one more time, see how much more juice we get. So far, another five ounces, 14 ounces so far. That's a little bit more. And then all the way. Ooh, the claws are slipping apart, so we're going up a little too fast. Let's see if we can reposition them. Again. That's a perfect example of not going up or going up too fast. So you want it all the way and back it off a little bit. You do not want to go up too fast. The claws will separate the slip apart just like we did. Back it off a little bit and that's a little bit more. That's a tiny bit more. Six and three quarter ounces, eight ounces, all right, so far, another eight and a half ounces. I'm not going to press it anymore to get the idea. So another 17 ounces of juice. All right, my friends, I'm finished making this juice, mostly cucumber, with a little bit of greens and about eight pounds of carrots. And I was able to get 15 bottles of juice plus enough for a taste test. So let's give it a taste test and here's to your health my friends. As usual, delicious. I can taste the dandelion. I put dandelion greens in this. And I can definitely taste the cucumber. 
you like what you've seen, please tell a friend. And if you'd like to call me, my phone number is 760-753-0321. My email address is developtrust.cox.net and my webpage is wholehealthbound.com. As usual, delicious. I'll see you in the next video.